he had an infection on his head. That's the herpes blisters, you know, that broke out. I didn't know what that was. The doctor, she just thought it was a bacterial infection from the fetal scalp monitor where it left a wound. And she prescribed him antibiotics and that was that. She wasn't worried about it at that point until the seizures happened. They took some of his um, spinal fluid and they tested that and they told us that uh, he was HSV positive and that they found out that it was also in his blood and they told us that that was <laughs> it was going to be really serious do you think that's normal he keeps having these like twitches with his left arm one in every 10,000 live births is a neonatal herpes case. How, how many babies have to die before it's important? How many people have to be living in pain before we care? That, that's what sticks with me. The people that have the power and are cavalier about it, it bothers me. This right here is a, a scrapbook me and my girlfriend have made that has everything from when she got pregnant till until his death, uh, we've wrote him letters. We've kept every uh, every picture, everything we we could. Um, it's all we've got now. We know that herpes infections can cause encephalitis. It may predispose you for Alzheimer's and a lot of other you know uh, type of diseases. Um, it also can infect uh, neonates and cause acute encephalitis and death, you know, during birth. You'd think that they would want to test almost everybody. I mean, vaccinate people so it don't spread. At least give them the knowledge that they have it. That's the killer part. We are developing a new technology called AVIC. It's a serological based test similar to ELISA, but it's um, more sensitive in detecting herpes viruses and it will be more effective in diagnosing patients. People don't realize that it's a huge problem. You can call it a silent pandemic. Everybody knows COVID by now, but herpes is probably as important and as uh, dangerous as COVID is. How can there be nothing better than 50-year-old technology? How do you look a patient in the eye and say, no, this is, this is the best we can do for you? I, don't, I just couldn't accept that. So I went to the science. I educated myself on the virus as much as I could. And I, like I said, really what, what got me motivated to believe that we could find a solution to HS1 and HSV2 is the fact that it's so closely linked to uh, HHV3, chickenpox virus and the fact that it had been resolved with a live attenuated vaccine. Rational engineering, basically, which is kind of partly how the company derives its name. There's a, there's a very specific gene within the genome of, of HSV that's, that's been targeted. Uh, there's a protein called ICP0 in, in, in HSV. As, as, as soon as one of these viruses infects a, a cell, uh, this protein kind of turns up the gas and, and, and cranks it up and also does this sort of evil thing and that is um, it, it suppresses the body's natural response, interferon response that's, that suppresses the virus. Um, so by sort of dialing in and knocking down the activity of this protein, you can slow down its replication in the cell and make it sensitive to the body's uh, fighting mechanism. And this achieves sort of this, you can achieve this perfect balance where you get just enough activity going on that you can get a good immune response to it, but it can't, but it, but it will sputter out and, and, and die in the process. As patient advocate, I hear from patients all the time, and I hear their hopelessness. 
They want to know when is Rational Vaccines going to have a treatment, therapeutic or prophylactic? How soon can this happen? The data has to confirm everything we believe, everything we're seeing. And, and I think the regulators and the world has to get excited about it the way we are. Seriously. Because look, I am convinced 100% that Rational will solve this problem. But I am even more convinced that if we took it as serious as it needs to be taken, somebody will solve the problem. We want our IP strategy to enable those innovations to be uh, utilised by as many people as possible. We do not want to block innovation. We want to take our innovations and share them with others so that collectively we can address the herpes pandemic. We really need to vaccinate everyone against herpes, right? This is a global effort. This is not rational vaccinate 8 billion people. This is rational energize the world to defeat herpes. That's what this is. Out of all this chaos, that informing people, you know, that could save somebody's baby. And that brought me a little bit of peace. The scientists that work here, they're gonna resolve that virus. And you know, and what they're saying, if you ask them, why are we experimenting with potential, something that may work, when we know that a properly attenuated live mutant will resolve the virus? Make it safe, make it efficacious. We know this will work. It's always worked. It worked with smallpox. It worked with chickenpox. Why are we experimenting while babies are dying, while people are suffering? The technology that I have developed, which is licensed rational vaccines, will ameliorate, to a large extent, herpes infections worldwide. We are trying to make the when as soon as possible, and the where be right to you as the patient. So that in the future, our children don't have to ask the question of where do I get treatment. If you have a properly attenuated live vaccine, you can resolve its corresponding virus, and we do. I'm doing this video so this don't happen to other people, so they don't have to live what me and Brianna lived through.